Hey, welcome back to another PyBytes training video. Today will be a bit of a code walkthrough, and I want to show three things. Um, the AutoMap SQLchemy feature to map to a database and reflect the tables. And then we're going to use HTMX to talk to some Flask endpoints. And ultimately, we want to create uh, beautiful graphs with chart.js. So let's dive straight in. So this is the repo I want to show you today. I called it SA Graph, not very fancy. Um, but we're going to look at some interesting things. First, to give credit where credit is due, um, this all started following this graphing pretty charts with Python Flask and Chart.js tutorial. And what's nice about this article is that it has very comprehensible code and yeah, it kind of solves the problem that I had before of embedding a graph on a web page. So it's a very simple Flask app. It takes a bunch of labels and values and it renders a template and passes in some variables. And then thanks to the JavaScript of the graph.js, you get this beautiful graph. So that was very useful, uh, but I wanted to take a, st a step further and connect to an existing database. Now, SQL Alchemy has this auto map feature that allows you to do exactly that. So you can create your engine as normal, but then you can use the prepare method to reflect the tables. And that basically makes uh, classes of your existing tables. So working many projects, I have many databases and tables. So I thought it was fun to make any graph from any table. And to show you what I mean, let's just see this in action first. So I need to enable my virtual environment and then I can just flask run and that works because I have a flask env file. So let's open another tab and browse to localhost 5000. And here we, so first of all, this connects to a database, which is the PyBytes books database. And it detects all the tables. So for example, if they take the auth user table, it now dynamically, and that's HTMX, we get back to that in a minute, it dynamically finds all the columns. All right, so this is Django. So we always have an auth user table and that always has a date joint column. And I have to zoom out a little bit because I'm recording on 1280 times 720. Uh, but here we see users joining over the month with there was a, a spike in July last year, probably because we promoted the PyBytes books app a little more. And I can do this on any column. Now, this is not that interesting. We could also see at user books being added and inserted. And wow, we see the spike here in September, basically this month. And that was because we rolled out Celery um, for batch importing of Goodreads books using Celery. And we've spoken on this on the podcast. Hence this spike of um, books that were added to user accounts. Let's do one more goals. Here's the distribution of number of books people set for goals. It's pretty primitive. It's uh, only doing one um, type of graph, but still it's uh, you get an indication of things. How many book notes were there? That's not used that much, except for September 2018, I think, when we rolled out the feature. So anyway, the graphing could, of course, be more advanced, but that's not the point. Uh, the point is that with this code, we reflect a database, and we can use any database, right? We could also go with an SQLite database. So I already exported um, a table like this with date joint of random dates, and I should have that here in my local database. So here I have a users table, 
and it has uh, random names, random emails, um, which again, let's step back for a second. This Mockaroo page is awesome to create random data. So I can give it a field name. And if you look at the amount of stuff we have available, you can get all kinds of random data. So I could get a car model and I could use a car make or manufacturer. And I can choose SQL or CSV and I can preview it. And now we get like random models and random manufacturers. It's super useful. So I already downloaded that and uh, inserted that because you can export raw SQL. So I've got a bunch of random names, uh, emails, uh, dates and countries. And I can now reflect that with SQL Alchemy if I stop the server and I change the environment variable from Postgres to this SQLite 3 file database. Run Flask again. Close this. Refresh this and it has one table and we can look at date joint. And again, we get a nice graph of when users joined. This is all fake data, of course. Uh, we can a distribution of the countries, most users from France, completely random. So that's pretty cool. Enough about the demo. Let's uh, look at some code. So here is a um, relatively straightforward Flask app. And here we have the SQL Alchemy auto mapping going on. So this code is responsible for loading in any database and turn it into SQL Alchemy objects. Then we have some helpers and some endpoints. And what's actually interesting to show in this video is how this dynamic magic happens of selecting a table and then populating the second select box. And that's all HTMX. So HTMX is brand new, uh, super excited about it because it makes writing JavaScript, um, well, less likely that you have to do it because it has Ajax and WebSockets and all these good things embedded. So it's now very easy to write HTML kind of syntax. It makes it very easy to call your endpoints and retrieve a response. And normally uh, with Ajax calls and, and updating parts of your page, you're normally bound to some JavaScript and that's fun, but this makes that layer almost redundant. You can work directly in your HTML. So to show that in action, let's open a template for this app. And um, here we have two select boxes, right? So we have the tables and the columns. As you noticed, um, the columns are empty and it starts with the table dropdown. So that's this code. And you can see here the new hx dash syntax. So this actually is going to make a get request to the slash columns endpoint, which you see on the right, which is flask. That's going to retrieve the table name passed in, and that's going to retrieve the table object from the, uh, from the base, from the SQL alchemy classes. And then it's going to return what I call a partial template, which I indicate with an underscore. Uh, passing in the table columns. This columns.html is nothing more than um, a loop of option tags with the names of the columns. So that's the response of that endpoint. And here with the hx target, you specify the diff where that partial template should be populated into. So I set columns here and that corresponds to columns here. So that's effectively the second select box on the page, which was this one. So when we call the columns endpoint, we set it to target columns. So that partial option list you saw in the underscore columns.html gets embedded into this select dropdown. And then from there on, we do the same thing. So we're going to call the graph endpoint which corresponds to this Flask endpoint, which is the function build graph. 
that retrieves the argument, calls the helpers to come up with the labels and the values. And this is a nice trick um, to transpose a dictionary, um, so a list of tuples of key values into their labels and values. And then we um, calculate the max height of the graph and then the same story, we have a dedicated partial template which is called underscore graph and we pass in these variables. And that underscore graph, that has all the JavaScript I got from the article I mentioned. So it has a canvas, it has a bunch of JavaScript that's producing that beautiful graph. And going back to uh, index, sorry, it has the hx target of graph, which is a diff at the bottom of the page. So when this completes, when we come back from the graph endpoint, this graph endpoint is going to render this partial template. And that partial template HTML is going to be embedded in this. And that's responsible for the three-step procedure of rendering the initial HTML, secondly, rendering the second select box based on the response of that first endpoint. And then upon choosing it, it generates that graph in the diff. Now there's a lot of take in, so I recommend that you look at the repo, it's SA graph, it's under my GitHub. And the flask code is in app.py. And the templates, the HTMX is in index.html. Welcome back. Sorry, that might have been a little bit dense, but yeah, there were three really cool takeaways from this video, I hope, which is the AutoMap SQL Alchemy feature to map to any database. So if you already have a database with data and you want to use it in SQL Alchemy, you can use AutoMap. Then we can get rid of writing JavaScript. I'm not bashing on JavaScript because I actually have fun writing JavaScript, but for many people find it convenient um, if we can put more of the syntax into the HTML and talk directly with the Flask, Fast API, or whatever endpoints. And HTMX lets you do that. And then of course there's Chart.js to make beautiful graphs. So hope this is useful. Hope you have itchy fingers to uh, start using these three technologies in your own projects. And of course, if you have any feedback or questions, reach out to me, um, comment below, and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button below as well to don't miss out on any future Python developer and mindset videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.